Welcome back everyone, Ryan Mentz here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about my Sony camera settings for bird photography. Uh, it's something that's been requested, and so I'm giving what the people want. Um, I'm not going to talk about every setting in the, the cameras here, I'm just going to do the ones that are probably relevant to bird photography and my reasons behind why I have it set up the way I do. And so if you're looking for a video that kind of walks you through every single menu item and tells you what it does, this is not that video. This is just going to be for bird photography and what I got going on. So let's get started. First up, we have uh, the first tab, first page, and file format, RAW plus JPEG. Uh, the reason for that, uh, the reason for JPEG at all is because uh, for wildlife photography, you're probably shooting a lot of burst frames, a lot of continuous uh, motion and stuff like that. And so with that, you probably, uh, well, at least I recommend you would use Photo Mechanic, an application to uh, go through and cull all your images and save you a lot of time. Because what it does, instead of uh, reading every single raw file and then converting those to uh, a preview image and all that, like other um, raw conversion softwares and catalogs like Lightroom and Capture One, what Photo Mechanic does is it just looks at the embedded JPEG inside the RAW file and it just displays that. So it shows you a nice sharp preview image just uh, for purposes of calling through it. But the problem is with Sony cameras is that the embedded JPEG in their RAW files is like a tiny little thumbnail. And so um, that really isn't helpful when you're trying to call a bunch of images. So. I, with Sony cameras, you generally have to do RAW plus JPEG if you're using Photo Mechanic. Down here, I just have the JPEG as the fine quality, so at least I can kind of tell the sharpness too. And then JPEG image size, with all the Sony cameras I have, I just set it to the smallest one that will go. So for the A9 here, that's going to be small and 6 megapixels, which is, uh, it's, it is small, but it's good enough for doing the culling. And then uh, RAW file type, i um, kind of jumping around here, sorry. Uh, raw file type is compressed because with uh, all the Sony cameras, I think, in order to get the most frames per second and just the better, better performance, you have to shoot in compressed mode rather than uncompressed. If you're doing like landscapes and stuff like that, I would definitely use uncompressed. Um, talked about that, talked about that. Uh, regular image ratio. And uh, the APS-C Super 35, this is the crop mode basically. But it would be really weird if anyone actually like went into the menu system to, you know, toggle this. So later on, I'll show you how to map the crop mode to a button in your camera, and that'll be way more helpful. Uh, next page, we have uh, long exposure, doesn't really matter. High ISO noise reduction. Uh, you have normal, low, and off for the A9. And what's kind of interesting, if you use normal, I might switch back to this uh, eventually, but I'm just kind of playing around with what's going to be better. But normal, it's really interesting. Uh, what it does in the camera is it obviously applies that noise reduction, but it's it's really good, but like maybe not great for bird photography. Because what it does, it like retains all the sharpness and it retains color actually pretty well. But what starts to wash away is the fine detail. And uh, so that's normal and low. It's kind of in between, you know, having no kind of process in camera noise reduction and having um, the nice clean image, but the fine details are kind of washed. So this is kind of in between. And then on the computer, I'll obviously do some more noise reduction with that low. Uh, color space, this is only going to be for the JPEGs and the previews and stuff on the camera. It doesn't really matter what you choose. Don't think too hard about it. Um, not really relevant. Register custom shooting settings, that's going to be the recall custom holds. And that's going to be more relevant to when you want to map one of these to a button on your camera. And I'm going to show you how I do that later on. Auto focus settings here, uh, priority settings in AFS, that's going to be on autofocus. And uh, I think the default is balanced for this. So the reason I want that set to autofocus is because the only reason that I would ever, ever, ever use AFS was because there's some kind of autofocus issue in the first place. So 99.9% um, .9 of the time I'll be in AFC because that's uh, how bird photography works generally. Uh, AFS, that's gonna be able to focus in low light, like very, very low light, just a little bit better than AFC. 
So if I'm doing it over in AFS anyways, um, my concern is autofocus, so that's why I don't use balance, I use autofocus. And then AFC, I just leave it on balanced. And maybe I should mention that what the setting does is that uh, if it's on autofocus, that means the camera will not take a picture unless if it confirms that what it should be focused on is in focus. And then release, it just will not matter. You press the shutter and it will take a photo no matter what. And then balance is kind of between those two. It's not going to take a totally, completely blurry photo um, if you just like suddenly lay down on the shutter. But at the same time, it's not going to be super picky if the, something is like coming in and out of focus. Um, so balance for this, and that seems to work really well. So I'm going to talk about focus area, um, probably not the way you expect, because focus area is just what you're going to change it to um, in the camera, on your actual camera when you're out there shooting. And uh, so, but what I want to talk about is how you should set your up, how you should set up your camera uh, before you head out to shoot. So um, I always default my camera back to the same settings uh, once I'm done using it. That way I can put it next to me in the car as I'm driving somewhere and I know exactly how it's set up. So if I do see something, I can just turn on the camera or if I already have it on, I'll just grab it and I can start shooting or adjusting from those base settings that I know exactly where they're at. And uh, so zone, because lately I've been driving out and there's a bunch of fields on the side of the road, not really any perches where I'd want like a single point where a bird's going to be perched. Uh, zone, because I'm going to be looking for birds in flight in the field as I'm driving along. And uh, so that's kind of that. Focus settings, uh, you set that up with your camera. You don't really do it in the menu. Focus area limiter, this is going to be for the A9, A92, A7R4, I think those are the only ones that have this. Um, it's going to be able to limit the focus areas that you are able to choose from um, with the buttons on the camera. So for me, I just have it uh, zone, flexible spot small, and expandable flexible spot. So for me, it's just going to be uh, birds in flight mostly, and then uh, birds perched, mostly, and then uh, either like a hybrid of those two or birds in flight. If I feel a lot more confident, it's like a slower bird or something, I use that instead of the zone. And then the ones at the bottom are tracking modes, and I gotta be honest, I like never really use tracking modes, but I leave uh, the tracking mode thinger uh, left open on the camera because um, I try to force myself once in a while to use them, but then I usually get reminded of how much I don't like using them. And uh, <laughs> at this point, should I talk about why I don't use tracking modes? I guess. So the problem with tracking modes is that it will it frees up your compositions, which you might think is good, but when you actually put that to practice, that means you're going to be starting off with like a certain focus point and then you're going to be able to free compose because uh, it's just tracking whatever the initial focus point you had it on. But you can like start free composing with that. But if suddenly you lose your tracking, then you're probably going to be way off from where your subject is now. It's going to be like on the other side of the screen or something. And so you have to like readjust your camera, reacquire that focus on them, and then go back to the free composing on the other side, or you can start using your thumb stick and it all becomes way overcomplicated when I rather just get my focus point over the subject and then just uh, focus from there and just keep adjusting it from the actual focus point without the tracking. And you might not agree with that. I know a lot of people do like the tracking modes. It just doesn't work well with uh, the way I think about um, shooting bird photography. Next up we have switching the vertical and horizontal autofocus area and the options for this is the autofocus point and the autofocus and autofocus area. Uh, what this means is uh, the difference is when you have your camera in the regular horizontal shooting position and then you turn it to like portrait style vertical position, um, what that's going to do to your focus points in the focus area. I have it so that uh, it's only going to change where my focus point is when I turn it vertically. So say I have it horizontal and I have it like centered up and a little bit above. But if I were to turn my camera vertically, then now it's suddenly like in the middle and a little bit to the left instead of, you know, where it used to be. So um, you can de-link those so you have a, a different focus point for each orientation. And then it's the same idea, but plus the autofocus area. 
So you can have like your horizontal is going to be a single point, whereas if you turn vertically, now suddenly it jumps to like a zone autofocus. I don't like that, but I do like having the autofocus point delinked. So that's how I have it set here. Uh, autofocus illuminator is off. Don't need that at all. <laughs> um, this is going to be for your uh, animal IAF settings and all that, but normally you want to actually have a lot of this set up as either custom buttons or in the function menu, so I don't have to dive too deep into the actual menu for all this stuff. Um, I will say if you're doing bird photography, subject detection animal is not going to work very well and you're going to get a lot of false positives. So uh, while I do have this on right now, I also, like I said, I have it mapped to a custom button because if I start seeing false positives, I can really quickly turn it off. And so that way I don't start losing a bunch of photos and uh, like I have something in front of me and it's not working well and I can't turn it off right away. That would really suck. So um, this is just going to be for uh, actually showing the that the eye is currently being or what should be the eye is currently being tracked. Uh, so I have that on, but I'll show you all that later. Autofocus tracking sensitivity 5 is probably what I recommend for any Sony camera. And you might say, why would you not want to be locked on to your subject or like, you know, even balanced out a little bit? It's because these cameras focus super well and they're very smart. So um, you don't really need to be, I feel like it's traditional thinking to need this stuff. Maybe that's more important if this was like a DSLR, but um, I'd rather have it bounce off for like one frame and then bounce immediately back on instead of like bouncing off if you had the uh, the tracking on too hard, bouncing off and then it keeps locked on like an off focus area. I'd rather have it like bounce so I get, you know, it's mostly going to just keep on refreshing where that focus area is and usually it gets it every single time, but I want it to keep on refreshing where the focus area is. And that just makes more sense to me, and I have way more luck with that over any of the other ones. Um, if you were going to try to balance it out a little bit, even just the difference between 5 and 4 is a little bit noticeable. So I would just drop it down to 4 if you really do want your focus um, a little bit more locked on. I don't think you should be using 1, 2, or 3, though. That's just a little bit too crazy for me. Your camera's smarter than that. Moving along, uh, autofocus with shutter. That means you have your autofocus start activation when you have your shutter button halfway pressed down. I have that on. That's uh, I really recommend it for bird photography. I used to use back button focus, but I realized uh, back button focus is kind of getting outdated. Wrote an article about it. Um, it's much better to have your thumb ready to go with your focus point rather than only being able to do either the focus point or either focusing, um, just leave it up to your shutter button. It's so much better. Next page, we have, uh, most of these settings don't really matter. Uh, circulation of focus point. This means if you go to the far left uh, focus point and you hit left once more, it'll jump to the far right. And I have it as do not circulate just because it makes more sense in my head. I can um, kind of understand that, you know, if I go far enough, then it's just going to stop and I'm, it's, it's more predictable for me. And, but, uh, I think it makes sense both ways. It just kind of depends on how your brain works and how you want to set up your camera. Um, next up, focus frame color. You can, on the newer cameras, you can set what your frame color is. So I know a lot of people are annoyed, like with the A7R3, that it's just gray. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm annoyed by that too. So, with uh, the newer cameras, you can set it up to either red, white, or gray. And red is obviously the best one you can choose from out of those. Next up is the exposure screen. And none of this really matters to me. Um, I guess it does a little bit when I switch over to video, but uh, I'm using manual exposure all the time. So I don't use like uh, shutter priority, aperture priority, auto, those kind of things. I don't use that. I just do everything manually, it just, uh, it makes more sense to me. I always know where my settings are at. It's nothing unpredictable about it. Um, metering mode, I would recommend this being on multi if you do use any of the other ones. Um, it's just much easier to read an entire scene in your head and uh, be able to adjust appropriately for that rather than um, trying to determine your subject only and the, the metering off your subject. 
All right, jumping ahead, um, we're gonna go to white balance. It's normally at cloudy, and the only time I won't use cloudy in general is because it's uh, prime time shooting at the golden hour, and golden hour will be looking best if it's in daylight setting. Um, but all this is gonna be, you know, modified in post processing anyways. But cloudy is gonna look the best on the back of your camera in general, and so I leave it on cloudy. And then uh, the dynamic range optimizer auto HDR, make sure you set this to off. Otherwise, what you see on the back of your camera is not going to be uh, very accurate to what's actually uh, comes up on your computer and stuff. It's just going to be a big disconnect. Um, it is kind of interesting to use if you do landscapes, I think, because um, as long as you know that this is on, um, I think it's kind of helpful because it shows you more truthfully um, what you can expect, how like how far you can expect to be able to push your file in post-processing. But the thing is, you have to know this is on, and you have to know that you're seeing something that's not actually the the image you took. It's like a it's an auto HDR of it. But I think it's kind of helpful, but you just have to know if it's on or off. But bird photography and all that, just leave it to off, and you'll you'll see what you see on the camera is what you can expect to see on the computer. All right, moving ahead. Um, if I'm skipping something that you actually did have a question on, just leave a comment um, and I'll try to answer it for you. But uh, I don't want to make this video like three hours long. So uh, to the movie settings, um, I shoot... Well, this is going to be for like if I'm in my photo taking manual mode, manual exposure, you know, M. Um, I'm going to have it set up this way so that if I'm taking photos and then suddenly I want to start taking video, and I hit the record button, this is what I can expect to happen. And uh, I have it on uh, shooting at uh, full HD 120p. And that's gonna be because I'm always shooting handheld. And if I shoot it in a, a high frame rate, that means I can slow it down to either four or five times in post. Um, and that's gonna be able to uh, have the handheld shot footage look much better. It is not gonna be so shaky. Um, if I was just shooting like a regular 24 or 30p frame rate, that would uh, not look that great. Um, so if you really slow it down to like 120, that means that you're going to be able to shoot handheld footage, which is actually pretty cool. Um, autofocus drive feed, speed is fast. Um, it, it says fast, but it's not fast enough, really. <laughs> uh, autofocus tracking sensitivity, standard. Um, So you're doing the A9, you probably want to just leave this on electronic shutter. That's going to give you the 20 frames per second. I mean, this is the setting to do 20 frames per second, but it's going to enable you to use 20 frames per second. Um, I have the finder frame rate as high just because um, the thing with Sony cameras that people like to talk about is the battery life and stuff. Um, I used to own the original A7R. I'm used to the tiny batteries and a high powered camera. Um, I've always, always felt that uh, spending the battery life to get these features of mirrorless camera and the Sony mirrorless cameras, um, it's worth it. I will spend uh, battery life all day for having an improved, improved experience. And that's just kind of my thought. So uh, um, most settings, if I can really crank them up, I'll crank them up because uh, I don't care about the battery life as much as I do having the best experience with my cameras. Uh, zebra setting, I have a full video dedicated to just this topic, and I really recommend any bird photographer with the Sony cameras to use this. And there's a kind of a special way to set this up with the custom um, settings, so uh, you can just match that if you want to. But I have a video explaining what all this is going to do. And that enables me to shoot in with a manual exposure and never have to pay attention to the metering at all because I can just visually see when things are going to get blown out. Uh, grid line, I have it on rule of thirds grid, um, just my preference. And jumping ahead to the custom keys. So this is going to be how you set up the actual buttons on your camera to do different things. And pretty much every button on this camera is customizable. So um, if you have a newer Sony camera, you're going to have this nice graphical display of where these buttons are. And if you have an older one, this is going to look a little bit different. It's going to have more just a basic list. and uh, But it all does the same kind of thing in this 
menu. So um, the rear dial, the control wheel, I have it so when I spin it, that's going to change my ISO. The default is you have to press, I think, yeah, you have to press right, and then you start spinning it, and that's ridiculous. So um, I have it so you just spin it, and it starts changing right away. Um, Autofocus, manual focus, control hold on my AEL button. And that's going to be able to, uh, since this lens doesn't have a full-time manual focus override, that means when I hold in that button, I'm going to be able to manual focus. And I'll have the focus pe peaking uh, markers on there too, which is really nice. And once I let go, um, I can start autofocusing again. And so uh, it's kind of the easiest way to overcome having uh, a lens that doesn't have a full-time manual focus override. So if you are also an owner of the 2600, I would look into using the AFMF control hold. Uh, it's very helpful. And uh, this one's gonna be a recall custom hold, which we saw earlier, but I said we'd get to it now. So uh, recall custom hold, this one in particular is gonna be just um, only for uh, switching over to a zone uh, autofocus area and so you can see uh, everything else is unchecked you can uncheck it by that doing that and then uh, these are all different things that you can set up your camera to do once you are holding that button and then when you release it it'll go back to the way things were before so when I'm holding my AF on button like I said I don't have back button focus I have it so that kind of frees up a button in order to do whatever else I want to do with it and this is what I have it. So the focus area goes to zone and the autofocus area is on. So that means if I'm shooting in like a single point focus area, um, I have a perch bird or something, and then I want to immediately switch to the uh, zone focus area, I don't have to go uh, press any other buttons and kind of go through any menus or do anything like that. I just hold in that button and instantly, or almost instantly, uh, there's a little bit of a delay it'll go into zone autofocus area and start autofocusing while I'm holding that. And so that's a really cool way to work if you're doing bird photography, um, it's very helpful. And then uh, this is gonna be just for the A9s really, um, because uh, what this C3 button does normally on other cameras is it changes uh, the, uh, it's for, it changes from AFS to AFC um, manual focus, all that stuff. And since uh, the A9 has an actual dial on top of the camera for doing those things, um, that frees up that button. And I kind of ran out of things to do with custom buttons. So for this, I just have it set to changing the shutter type between the electronic shutter um, and the mechanical shutter. And so if I'm if I actually shoot indoors, um, you probably want to be using the mechanical shutter. But in general for bird photography, I'm just leaving on electronic shutter and I've never once actually pressed that button because I've never shot indoors since I bought this camera. Um, but it's there if I need it, if I remember it. All right, next up, uh, this one's very important. So the finder monitor selection is gonna be the trash can button. There is a precursor to doing this that I forgot to mention. So head back and go back a couple pages until you see the finder monitor option. And for me, it's grayed out because the camera's hooked up to the TV, which is probably why I forgot to mention it. But for you, it'll probably say auto over here. And you just want to go in here and select monitor first. And then once you do that, head back to the custom key page. And what that does, the viewfinder and the display will normally, if you don't change anything about it, they'll auto switch between the two. So if you bring your eye to the viewfinder, the viewfinder will turn on and the display will turn off. And so you're looking through the viewfinder, you can shoot that way. And then once you move your eye away from the viewfinder, now the back screen lights on. And I hate that personally. So I have that uh, disabled or I have it set to one of the two. And then by pressing the trash button, um, it'll manually switch between the two. And that just uh, works way, way better for me. So this is going to be the center of the uh, joystick or multi-selector or whatever they call them. Um, I just always think of it as a joystick. Uh, that's going to be when you press the center of it. I have it to not set just because I find... Uh, um, I actually made an Instagram story about this before where I, I, ugh, where I really thought that like having that set to like an AF on 
would be really cool for back button focus series because you could shift your focus point and then just uh, hit that center one or hold that center one to start auto focusing. And that sounds great in theory, but the problem is um, it's really easy to accidentally press that when you're switching up the focus point. So, um, and if you are holding that in accidentally, you can't shift the autofocus point. So you can't hold it in and also shift at the same time. Um, actually, maybe you can now with the A9 II, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but anyways, I have it to not set just so there's never any uh, issue with um, holding it in and triggering something on accident. Um, next up is going to be Recall Custom Hold 2. That's going to be the center button of the control wheel. And when I do that, that changes to my, uh, oh crap, button. That's going to be my suddenly a bird in flight is there and I'm not ready for it with any of my settings. And by that I mean it switches to uh, shutter priority, shutter speed of 1 2,000th, uh, drive mode goes to continuous. I'm already going to be in continuous, but this is again my, oh crap, maybe my settings are totally out of whack with this. Um, ISO auto, which is uh, unusual because I, like I said, I shoot full manual, but I saw auto in this case because I don't know where my settings are at, so I need it to be an auto. Uh, Multimetering, uh, continuous autofocus, zone autofocus for the birds in flight, and AF on. So all this stuff gets switched when I'm holding in that button because uh, I'm probably, you know, not ready for it at all. I'm shooting a perch bird at a slow shutter speed, and then, you know, I got a northern harrier flying by, so I want to start shooting that. And so all I have to do is point my camera there and hold in that, that button and it's it's ready to shoot like that. All right, next up, uh, this is another one of those buttons that's kind of A9 specific for me because what this uh, what the left button on the control wheel would normally do is switch the drive mode. And since again, the A9 has a uh, dedicated physical control for that on the top dial, um, I no longer uh, need that to be there and I can free it up for something else. And again, I kind of, I don't have any other customizations that I have in mind to use that for. So I have it on focus magnifier, which is only really relevant if I'm in a manual focus or yeah, manual focus. So that uh, if I'm in manual focus and I hit this button, it's going to zoom in a little bit more. Not the actual photo, but just for uh, um, focus checking really. Um, so that's all the focus magnifier does basically for focus checking. Next is going to be the setting that I talked about before, the crop mode, basically. So this is where I have it set up, uh, the right button on the control wheel. Um, that's my toggle for going in and out of crop mode. And I use that all the time. So um, I'm going in and out of it all the time, I should say. So this one's pretty important if you're doing bird photography because you're going to want to take advantage of crop mode. Like I said, this is the A9, so when I'm going into crop mode, the megapixels drop quite a bit. And I don't care because I'm going to be cropping anyways, and I just want to get that focus uh, even more spot on in camera. So I'll use crop mode there. Uh, subject detection, like I said before, it's uh, pretty finicky with animal IAF for birds. Um, it's almost never going to work. And uh, even for like deer and stuff, it'll, it'll a lot of times focus on their back. They think that they think there's a... Uh, an eye on their back or something like that and you want to be able to turn this off um, when it's not working out for you you want to be able to do that really quickly so that's why I have it mapped to a custom button which is going to be the down on the control wheel this isn't turning the eye autofocus on or off this is switching between animal IAF uh, detecting the animal and uh, going to detect a human and I find if you're in the human mode, there's not really very many false positives with it. So um, that's why I have it set to not really turning that feature on and off in a sense. It's turning um, the subject detection from animal to human, um, just to clarify. And then on the top, uh, C1 for the A9 is going to be my white balance. And then this is the focus area. I'm pretty sure these are the defaults um, pretty much with any of the newer cameras that have the two buttons on top there. Uh, focus area is going to be your uh, C2. Uh, lens, this is going to be the, the buttons on the lens here. Oh wait, there's not one on that side. <laughs> it's on the top uh, left side and the bottom for the 200-600 lens. And as I talked about in my uh, lens settings uh, video, I have this disabled because there's a lot of accidental pressing of them going on. 
And I don't want to be confused as to why my camera's doing something I don't expect it to with those accidental presses. So I just avoided it altogether and said it's not set. Um, and like I said in that video, if you're more aware of where your hand is and what you're doing and all that, then go ahead and set that up for whatever you want. Heading down to the custom key for the playback, I do have a recommendation, and that's going to be setting the star rating to the function button. And when you do select this in the custom button uh, settings, it'll bring up this screen where you you can choose which star ratings that will cycle through. And for my own personal culling system, a two star means that it's a keeper. So that's why that's the only one that I've selected. Um, you can do whatever your system is. You can keep them all selected if you really want to go into the nitty gritty of what that photo is rated straight off your camera. Um, I think it's more important just to have like a yes or a no um, when you're just doing very basic calling on, on your actual camera when you have a minute. So for me, that's just a uh, two star. Um, that way I can just uh, knock that out real quick if I have a minute. All right, next is the function menu settings. And I will say that uh, you can look at how I have it set up, but really this is all very uh, personalized. Um, for each individual shooter, I should say. Not really personalized for me, because I don't really use the function menu too much. I use it for a few things, but um, I should say, if you want to use the function menu, just set it up, whatever feels good for you. You shouldn't just copy someone else's. That doesn't really make sense. That's not what this is for. Um, so just uh, put your settings that it don't have mapped to a custom button, but you still want easy access to. Just pop, pop, bleh, pop them in here. All right, and then uh, skipping forward, I think, quite a bit, I will say, um, since you have, or since I have recommended now, uh, that you have your find viewfinder and the monitor um, set to a custom button instead of automatically switching between the two, what that's going to open up is, uh, I mean, you can do this either way, but you probably only want this set if you have that set. Um, I have this to the longest time you can have possible, 30 minutes. And that's because waking up from sleep takes way too long for these cameras, so you're probably going to miss shots if you're depending on that. And having it on 30 minutes, plus um, if you just leave the viewfinder uh, being the uh, active screen, um, you're going to save a lot of battery life when you have those two together. Um, because if you don't have your eye up to the viewfinder while only the viewfinder is the active screen, that screen will be turned off until you do bring your eye up to it. And so no screens are will be currently active while your camera is still on and ready to shoot right away. Your camera will still be active in ways like the autofocus or auto exposure and stuff like that. So it does drain the battery somewhat, but um, it's well worth it for actually getting the shot. All right, um, I don't use the touch. Um, if you are right eye dominant, which I'm not, I'm left eye dominant. Uh, if you're right eye dominant and you're looking through the viewfinder with your right eye, that means you have a lot of room with your right thumb to play with the touch settings. I don't have that uh, availability, so I can't really use touch. I um, think that might be all that's worth talking about. Um, I'll say for my menu settings, I don't have <laughs> very many. Uh, format's basically my prime go-to on this, so um, I use that pretty much all the time. And then uh, manual focus assist, that's going to be so if you are turning the uh, the focus ring while you're in manual focus mode, um, if it's automatically going to jump and uh, kind of give you a, the assistance for manual focusing because you're going to be able to see uh, things much closer up than what you're shooting. Um, raw file type, this is just so I can easily switch between the two. Um, it's probably just as quick using the actual in-menu item though. Audio signals, um, since this is the A9, uh, it doesn't make any noise or audio signals by default when you're shooting electronics. So um, if, I, if I was ever bothered by that, I can just jump in here because I'm sure otherwise I'm not gonna be able to find it digging through the menu. Um, haven't used it once though, <laughs> and that's gonna be it. Hopefully that was helpful to those that uh, were asking about my settings for bird photography. Uh, whether you're just looking for some different ideas or if you just got a Sony camera and you want to set it up like this for the first time. Um, if I didn't answer your question, go ahead and leave your question in the comments below and I'll try to answer it for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.